Hello, everyone. Hi, thank you guys so much for joining us yet again for another Tuesday uh, of the East Coast Greenway Alliance Impact Series for 2021. We're so excited to have you here as we'll be getting into our staff member for the Southern New England region, Bruce Donald. Uh, so if you joined us last week and joined our talk with Christine Keeney of the Northern New England region, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us again. If you are new here and new to the Impact Series, welcome. The Impact Series is our time at the end of the year to kind of sit and reflect on some of the amazing things and developments that are happening along the East Coast Greenway. It's a time to celebrate with all of you about all the things that you have helped us accomplish. And it's a time for us to envision what the Greenway could be and what it will look like in the near future. So again, today we're talking with Bruce Donald, who is the regional manager for the Southern New England region. Bruce, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we'll be hearing from you today, but we also are going to have some crowd participation. So people, if you're watching and you have experience in this region, you have questions about this region, or you just want to share suggestions with us, feel free to drop those comments in the chat and we'll be sure to build those to Bruce after our talk today. Uh, it'll be the best 30 minutes you're gonna have on this Tuesday afternoon. So be prepared to strap in. Uh, if you're familiar with the East Coast Greenway Alliance, you may be a little bit confused about the states that we're covering today. So previously, Bruce was the regional manager for Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey. Now he is the regional manager for Connecticut, Eastern Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. So with that in mind, and given the welcome presence of Lewis, who is the new New York, New, new York and New Jersey manager, uh, Bruce, what can you tell us about some of the successes that you've had in your previous region, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut? Well, there's a lot going on, as you can imagine. I, I, I will just touch the, the, the broad points here. Uh, obviously, the New York City to Philadelphia ride this year uh, with over 400 participants. Uh, it raised over $300,000 for the East Coast Greenway, and it brought attention to the glaring gaps in, uh, in New York, New Jersey, particularly New Jersey, because we mostly ran through New Jersey, and, and Pennsylvania, you know, the, the Circuit Trails area, uh, and, uh, and Philadelphia in particular. By any measurement, it was an enormous success. Uh, so we're going to hold it again in, in 22, this time in its proper spot in May, uh, and you can visit uh, greenway.org for all the information on that. That was likely the most recent fun for sure. Uh, I would say that um, New York City has announced a massive investment in maintenance and construction of both our primary route on the west side, but also on the east side of Manhattan, which still has major gaps in the travel route, like around the UN, for instance, uh, although they haven't announced that piece. But uh, of course, I think as projects go, you might have seen in the news lately the Essex Hudson Connector in New Jersey. That is predominantly a railroad corridor purchase from Norfolk Southern that extends from Jersey City uh, directly west to mid Montclair, getting nearly to Newark. Uh, and it's a true regional game changer because it's going to provide safe point to point travel uh, in the most heavily populated and I would add dangerous section of the entire East Coast Greenway. Uh, just a few days ago, Governor Murphy made a, an announcement regarding that purchase, and I can't emphasize enough the importance for the region. So those are those are the big things. Awesome, awesome. So, like you said, yes, the Essex Hudson Greenway is in the news a lot lately, and we're excited to continue to see that route develop in a way that is safe for pedestrians, cyclists, and rollers, anybody who uses the Greenway in and around that area in New York. Um, so going off of that, now moving on a little bit to your new region here in Southern New England, uh, there was recently a guide that we released for the Southern, Southern New England region, uh, detailing some routes and some places to uh, make sure that you check out within Connecticut and Rhode Island. Uh, so can you tell me and the viewers here a little bit about some of your favorite places along the Greenway in that area? Yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, first I would say, uh, and by the way, there it is. Uh, 
It's funny, when, when it went to printing, I didn't realize how big it was going to be. It's an amazing coffee table book, as it turns out. Uh, Lisa Watts wrote it for us brilliantly. And our amazing Alliance friends filled in all the gaps in the story. So the result is, I, I really think, a remarkable guide. Thanks to the 1772 Foundation for funding it. And as for your actual question, uh, for the trails, uh, I think you know, and many people know who know me, I've been working on the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail for over 20 years now. So that's been a big part of my life, quite frankly. Uh, I probably know every every square inch of it. But uh, uh, I, I do want to mention two others. Uh, the Airline State Park Trail in eastern Connecticut, which is a, getting to be a very long, contiguous portion uh, of the East Coast Greenway. Stone Dust Trail, just stunning uh, out, out there in the forests and uh, relatively small villages out there. And then I would add the Blackstone River Greenway coming down from Central Mass uh, through Rhode Island. Those two, I think, come immediately uh, to my mind as, as, as my favorites. I think mostly because all of them, all three of them are also different with that great mix of uh, rural, suburban, and uh, urban sights and sounds. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, you guys heard it here first. If you want to purchase your guide to the Southern New England region, you can do that now. You can get a physical copy. As Bruce said, it's a great copy table book, but you can also get a digital version that downloads directly to your uh, tech piece of choice. I don't know. Phones, tablets, laptops, desktops. I'm sure it works on all platforms. Um, so Bruce, uh, you are focusing your efforts, like you said, largely on Connecticut, central and eastern Massachusetts, as well as Rhode Island. Uh, so what are some of the great upcoming projects happening at the state and federal level that people can kind of look forward to as we venture into 2022? Oh, there's a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, many of you will know that Central Connecticut has been a bright spot for many years, uh, dominated by uh, the, the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail, which I just mentioned, which now is all in either construction or design and is all funded in Connecticut. So that includes New Haven Phase 4, which is in construction now, uh, will be complete late next year. Southington 3 is going to bid shortly, should be done late next year, early 23, and Plainville 1 uh, next the, the year after. So that's, that's going to be an ongoing process with Plainville being complete either late 25 or early 26 is the current thing I hear from DOT. And that will finish the, that part of the East Coast Greenway in the center of the state. To the east, off of that uh, route, Terraful 1 in Eastern Simsbury will break ground next spring to connect uh, to Bloomfield uh, as part of the Hartford Connector. And uh, importantly, the Capital Region Council of Governments is sponsoring uh, a Greater Hartford Gap Study for the remainder of Bloomfield, Hartford, and East Hartford. That will really wrap up. Uh, uh, that, study will, that study will wrap up in mid-23. So construction on those projects through 25 uh, into 26, but again, huge for central Connecticut because that will essentially connect Hartford. Uh, and that's something we've been trying to do forever and ever and ever. Uh, if you look further east, the last gap in the Hot River Trail includes a large bridge into Willimantic. That will break ground next year. That's been delayed due to permitting issues, uh, but will start next year, uh, likely a two construction season project. Uh, because of that big bridge. The Airline State Park Trail is reaching uh, is reaching completion. Uh, a $5.1 million crossings project in Pomfret was recently completed and only a mile or so remains into Putnam or so. That's in design right now. Uh, I think it's a Weston and Sampson project. If you head southeast from there, the Quinnebog River Trail is being designed in Killingly and further design money is being sought to the south of that. And then east-west, the Moose Valley Trail in Sterling, uh, which is right on the Rhode Island border, 5.5 miles, will start construction next year. So somewhere around 2026, Connecticut will be about 62% complete, uh, which is a big deal. Central, uh, Central Mass. Um, 
It's a story of, you know, well-planned corridors that are not quite complete in many areas, but do go from point to point in other areas. So the Mass Central Rail Trail takes you east to west to Greater Boston, which Christine talked about a bit last week. Uh, various projects are ongoing there and more will come online soon. There's a lot of planning going on right now. From there south to, to the Red Island's line, uh, we follow the Blackstone River Greenway, which is one of the most completed states, uh, Connecticut, into Rhode Island, by the way. So one of the most completed states at uh, 68% now it is. Uh, it still has noticeable gaps, as many of you are aware. Uh, so the Blackstone River, about 10 miles of this trail are paved. The rest of the trail to Pawtucket is on road, although we did just announce a new section there right in the downtown area. South of Pawtucket, you're on road into Providence, eventually reaching India Point Park at the head of Narragansett Bay. If you want to go west, that's the East Bay bike path. If you want to go east through Providence, uh, you're on and off, uh, mostly off road, uh, and then out through Cranston, Warwick, West Warwick, and Coventry, which are all sections of the completed Washington Secondary Rail Trail, 19 miles of continuous off-road route. And then we come full circle. Uh, the westernmost part uh, in Rhode Island is the Trestle Trail, which is about half done now. The remaining five miles would connect to this new construction, which you just mentioned, the Moosip Valley State Park Trail, uh, I just talked about in Eastern Connecticut. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like there's a lot to be excited about in Southern New England as it relates to trail design, trail development, and closing some of those critical gaps for riders and cyclists and pedestrians on and off road. Um, so I see some questions rolling here in the comments section. Please continue to put your questions in the comments section for Bruce, as this is my last question for him. So I want you guys to, to help me out here a little bit. Um, so you were talking, we started kind of talking about the Essex Hudson Greenway and the news that that will bring. And Lewis will surely be working to continue and building on the foundation that you set in New York and New Jersey. And you also kind of have a new partner in Christine, who is the regional manager for the northern half of New England. Uh, so in your opinion, and I know there's a lot to choose from. But what are you most excited for as it relates to working on projects in both your old region and your new region? Well, um, I will certainly be consulting uh, to Lewis and Daniel and Christine because we've all shared bits and pieces of all this, right? So that, that's the first comment I have. But I think, I think the big thing for me uh, is still the last major regional gap uh, in southern New England uh, into Westchester County, which is essentially Western Connecticut. Uh, Western Connecticut, the on-road travel route is well marked uh, in the Gold Coast towns all the way to West Haven on the shore. Uh, there are plans for the Merritt Parkway to have a trail alongside it on that very wide right-of-way, but that just hasn't come to fruition after 30 years of strong advocacy uh, uh, we got some design money for Stanford. Uh, Stanford voted it down, which seems incredible, uh, but they did. Uh, needless to say, you know, we're still working on that. That's a project that uh, we're going to continue to work on because it is really the best right of way east west that we've got, uh, you know, straight along that, that section. Uh, there are other options, however. To the north, there's potential uh, only now starting to percolate. Uh, one of those things is an extension from the new Empire State Trail in Brewster, New York, straight across to Danbury, Connecticut, which is in planning. Uh, we could attach uh, to existing trail in that portion of Connecticut. There's a bunch of different pieces out there. They're mostly orphaned, but they're out there. Uh, and then the idea of augmenting the shoreline on road route, which currently is our route, uh, you know, signed 100 uh, percent, kind of echoing Route 1, uh, that Route 1 corridor. And so the thought is new bike ped facilities along that corridor uh, to get into the planning stage. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of people regarding that, uh, the COGS, which are the MPOs in Connecticut. 
I expect all of the above to be in the mix in the near future. So I think that's the big project thing. Uh, I did want to mention in conjunction to projects, uh, one of the questions I got via email before this uh, from our friends on the Gold Coast, in fact, uh, you know, critical to this success are the folks that encompass the alliance portion of our name, you know, that alliance piece at the end. Uh, they're advocates, uh, the, the MPOs, the town bike walk committees, uh, et cetera. So, and they literally just need to get in touch with me. And what I'll do is I'll start to tailor a plan uh, to, uh, to weather the uh, admittedly long process uh, toward creating, you know, a fundable and buildable project or a series of projects in some cases. Um, uh, cause people do come up to me and say, I I'd love to, I'd love to build a trail. I say, fantastic. Uh, just make sure you've got about a decade because that's pretty much, uh, you start to finish, you know, what, what you're going to be spending. And, uh, uh, and it's critical to know that. So it requires advocates, town officials, staff, consultants, the MPOs or COGS in Connecticut. Uh, those are the planning agencies essentially. And then the state DOTs. And they all have to work together. It takes time. But we know it can be done because, uh, you know, our staff is uh, proving it every day. We're getting more and more done every year. Absolutely. There's a lot of development coming along the Greenway, a lot of partnerships and people coming into the work to develop safer and more accessible trailways along the East Coast Greenway. Uh, so we have a couple questions here in the chat. Uh, the first one is from Melanie Finsick on Facebook. She says, hi, I've always been curious why the East Coast Greenway didn't utilize the entire New Haven, Northampton Trail in Connecticut, Massachusetts. Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, thanks, Melanie. So the answer is we could, uh, except that we would factor out uh much of Rhode Island if we did that. <laughs> so we would have to really think hard about uh, about going up because essentially what you do is you go up through Westfield, which is getting done now, by the way. There's a, a bridge that's a problem up there that's going to take until next spring. And then you've got Southampton, but it looks like the railroad corridor is going to be bought. Uh, and then suddenly you're up at the Mass uh, Central Rail Trail and uh, and you can get across. You know, there's 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 some missing right of way. There's issues up there, uh, but you could do it. Uh, we've always been, if nothing else, opportunistic. And one of the things we've always talked about was we really want to go through the capital cities of the states that we're going through. And so it was never really a doubt that we wanted to go through Providence. And I suspect that's exactly what will happen. But it, it had more to do with the realities, you know, the real politic of which routes would get done first. And I think that's really the final answer uh, is that if you look at it objectively, we knew that we would get through to Providence. And it looks like, by the way, we will, you know, by 26, 27, uh, virtually from New Haven uh, all the way into Providence and through uh, be almost done with that corridor. So I, I hope I answered that. I think I did. Yeah, yeah, I think that's given us some insight into, you know, all the factors that people have to think about when developing a trail. Like, where does this go? Who are we leaving out? What are we including? Things of that nature. So hopefully we can come to an agreement that works for, for most riders and cyclists as it relates to that area. Yeah, and I would just add quickly that um, you know, we've had something of a moratorium on creating new secondary trails or, or connector trails. But we're looking at it more and more in a bunch of different areas. And, and so, you know, stay tuned because as more trail gets done that connects to other things, we want to be involved with those folks. So and, and we're doing that. I'll give you a great example. Uh, you know, uh, south of Philadelphia, there's a bunch of trail in, in, in uh, New Jersey that's getting done. And so that's something we've been looking at long and hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Melanie says, thank you. <laughs> uh, next comment or question here is from W. Smith on YouTube. They say, I'm not sure their pronouns. A couple of years ago, I attempted to ride the airline trail north from Willimantic. The further along, the more difficult and rocky the trail became. I had to turn around. Has this trail been improved? 
Yes and no. <laughs> I wish I could say yes completely. Uh, there are still some pieces. Uh, there's a legendary piece uh, in Goodwin uh, in Goodwin Park area called the Hampton Hole, which uh, still is miserable. Uh, there are other pieces that uh, that remain pretty nasty. Uh, we are, I am talking with Connecticut DOT right now uh, about uh, redirecting some funds to go through state parks to get those pieces fixed. One of the problems has always been that th those aren't DOT controlled trails, they're state parks controlled trails. State parks in Connecticut uh, uh, barely uh, has enough money to, 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 to keep going. And so we've been trying to find additional funds to do that. I would say also that uh, in the newer pieces that are being done, so I mentioned that 3.4 miles of Pomfret that just got done, that ha is, it in has included with that project uh, a couple of million dollars to completely uh, regrade, restone dust, repack, uh, do all the proper drainage that needs to be done. That project will take place next year, uh, and that's another that's actually federal funds that are doing that in a, in a state park area. So we're trying really hard uh, to get the, 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 the soft trails, as we would call them, as opposed to the paved trails, uh, uh, getting some sort of a maintenance agreement going forward and having money in the pipeline to successfully do that in the state. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. And, and, and something that we've been aware of for a long time, I'm afraid. Awesome. Awesome. So that's just one more example of the work that still needs to be done in this region that people are working diligently towards. Uh, we have two questions from Jay and you on YouTube. I believe they've been with us before. So thank you again for joining us. Their first question is, perhaps the biggest challenge with bike pad pathways is local control, where a, com where a community or even a few local people can stop a regional amenity. We are facing this in Massachusetts. What is the solution? The solution is to engage those people early, early, early on in the process. Uh, I'll give you a great example. Uh, I, I just talked about uh, Plainville, Connecticut, which is really the last gap uh, in Connecticut for the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail. And it's been a hard nut to crack over the years. There was, a vi there, there was and remains a vocal uh, uh, group of people that did not want to have it built. And we made a point in the process, in the design process, to get them involved and, and invite them, physically invite them to the design charrettes, engage them, have the town elected officials engage them. And over the process of that, of that kind of two, two and a half years, we were able to change some minds. Uh, we didn't change them all. Uh, but one of the things we did do was, uh, I think spend enough time with them that they got the understanding that we weren't just trying to shovel this, you know, in their backyard, that we really did want to work with them, that we'd be happy to do plantings, fences, you know, uh, you know, whatever they wanted to make sure they felt safe uh, and secure uh, and that, uh, you know, people weren't coming on their bike to steal their TV or something like that, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and but it, it it has worked, and I think that's the tack that needs to be taken. Is 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 this you know medium to long term uh, education of those folks? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point. Is that you know when we are thinking of and designing the East Coast Greenway, we're not just looking to put a trail wherever we think a trail should go. We're looking yeah. to work with local communities, yeah. state communities, to see where it would be best to go, to see where we can make it accessible and make it safer. Not only the people that are using the trail, but these local communities and populations. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, another follow-up question from Jay Angio. Any thoughts about using the Bruce Freeman from Framingham to Lowell and Lawrence as a secondary trail around Boston? Uh, big thoughts. <laughs> uh, I, I can't I can't talk about it too much, but uh, yeah, there are thoughts uh, because, among other things, uh, the, our current route uh, going north south, uh, we've got a real issue with whether we can use the railroad corridor or not. Uh, if we were to push up from Providence north 
to the Bruce Freeman, uh, there's there's thought that we might be able to get that piece to, done earlier. Uh, uh, it's still a work in progress, but uh, keep in touch with me because uh, that that yes, we're talking about that. All right, sounds like that's a resounding yes. <laughs> sounding yes, I'm thinking about it. Hopefully, some more planning will come soon. Yeah, uh, it's, it's gonna it's gonna take more thought. That's true. But yeah, but yeah, we're yeah, yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is from Ted G on YouTube. Is there a plan to get our signage onto the green to help people from outside of the local area to find local services such as food, bike shops, and shopping? Yeah. So 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 this this issue of ec what what we like to refer to as economic wayfinding uh, is a bigger and bigger deal. I I've, I'm discussing this with a, a bunch of communities uh, along our trail system. Uh, there's nothing, well, uh, there are a few towns uh, and pieces of corridors that have codified it. So, uh, you know, you actually have to go to the town, ask for a sign. You can get a sign uh, that will, uh, you know, essentially have an arrow uh, to uh, your ice cream stand or whatever it is. Um, have we done it as an organization? Uh, we have not, mostly because uh, when it comes right down to it, uh, it's the local municipality that has ha that has the right to do that by ordinance. So we've been obviously we talk about it all the time, but we don't, we don't have a policy ourselves on that. Uh, if if it's me, if you want to ask me about this on a personal basis, I think it's a fantastic idea because we want economic development uh, along the trail system. It's important. Uh, it's important to tax base. It's important to tourism, uh, and and it's just a good a good idea. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And again, there's some great things that the Southern New England guy can help with. But if you're maybe new to the East Coast Greenway and new to the area, definitely having that signage will help. And we definitely want to work with you know local transit authorities to make that happen and make it clear where to go and some places you should check out along the way. Yep. In fact, be, before I leave that, uh, there's two other concepts there. One of which is uh, mileage markers. Uh, mileage markers are not just for, for runners uh, and people that want to know their exact mileage on the trail system. It's also for first responders. Uh, if you're a tourist in particular and you don't know where you are, you can quote the mile marker and they can find you. Uh, that's, that's important. And that's, not really wayfinding, but it's it's really important, and and we need we need more of that uh, in our trail systems. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, no, that's a good thing to mention because right now, what I'm most familiar with, and probably most people who have been on these these coast greenway, is just signage. So seeing these coast yeah. greenway on a on a pole, or maybe some of our new road signage that's on the trail itself, if applicable. Um, so having some variation in the types of signage seems to be a, a big ask here. So, yep. Yep. No, we're good at wayfinding signage. We, we do that really well, uh, <laughs> but there's, but there's other stuff we need too. Yeah, absolutely. You just, you just don't want, you just don't want the trail to look like a huge billboard. That's, that's, that's the negative. The negative is, you know, uh, you, you've got signs everywhere, which, you know, you don't need that either. Yeah, absolutely. So another question about Massachusetts here from Jessica Mink on YouTube. In Massachusetts, Mass DOT and Mass DCR are formally cooperating through Mass Trails. Is something like that possible in Connecticut? Yes, more and more. Uh, in fact, if you had asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have said not so much. But uh, uh, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, which uh, controls state parks, so deep they're called in Connecticut, uh, as opposed to, as opposed to DEM or DCR, actually it's DCR in Massachusetts. To DEM in Rhode Island, they all have different you know nomenclature, but they are talking more and more. Yes, and they are cooperating more and more. And in fact, this thing I mentioned about uh, about maintenance uh, should be one of the things that really breaks the ice uh, between those two uh, powerhouses. Uh, you know, one of the things that's kind of a truism, but it's true. Uh, uh, in our states is that uh, the DOTs uh, are the big money bags and the DCRs of the world, DEMs, uh, DEEPs, uh, uh, 
are kind of reluctant to spend you know, the, on, on some of these capital projects because they just don't have the bandwidth or the money. Uh, and so what we're seeing now is uh, a lot more cooperation, a lot more formal cooperation uh, than we used to. And I'm very pleased that that's happening in Connecticut uh, more and more. Uh, are we, are we, are we uh, at the point of where Massachusetts is? No, we're not. But we're getting there. Great question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we are at 530. We do have a couple more questions if you're game, Bruce. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds good. So the next one is from Don Byrne on Facebook. There are discussions in Massachusetts to have the Greenway bypass Worcester. Is there any status on this from the Greenway? Also, if Worcester is bypassed, is this a logical connecting trail? I am the person pushing a route from the Mass Central Rail Trail to Worcester. So this is pertinent to my efforts. Thank you so much, Don, for joining us. <laughs> okay, so Worcester, uh, traditionally over the last number of years, uh, hasn't, hasn't seemed to be getting a, a lot done. Having said that, um, I think that, you know, we, we have always thought that we wanted to go through Worcester, first of all, and it is still our preferred route, our preferred spine route. Uh, talking about uh, other connecting trails um, doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily change the route. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with mass DOT, uh, and, and those discussions. So I do think that, you know, one of the things that, that we would do as an organization with the Massachusetts uh, committee uh, is, is hold a meeting uh, sometime, probably, I would guess, after the turn of the year and, and talk about this, uh, you know, in, in much more detail. One of the things we haven't gotten back is a lot of detail from DOT on this yet. So, uh, there have been some talks, there have been some discussions about bypassing Worcester, and it, we just haven't made any decisions about it. Uh, so, uh, so the answer is, I don't, I don't have anything firm for or against, other than acknowledging that there have been discussions. Okay. Sounds like my Southern accent came out there. Worcester is how you say that correctly. I've Worcester, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a new, that's a New England thing. It's Worcester. Yeah. Okay, I never would have guessed that. That wasn't no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> okay, uh, next, uh, I think it's more of a suggestion comment from Ronald Clement on Facebook. They say better signage directing bicycle commuters between Newark and New Jersey. Uh, we've had a couple people that came to the New York to Philly ride who were bicycle commuters. Uh, can you talk maybe more about the signage in that area and maybe some things that we've run into in creating better signage and directing people in that in that area, Bruce? Newark uh, has been difficult. Um, well, okay. We, we, we've got an on-road route from Jersey City to Newark. We've also got an on-road route from Jersey City South across the bridges, uh, across a piece of Staten Island, excuse me, piece of Staten Island, uh, and then reconnecting further south. That was done just recently because of the New York to Philly ride. The thought process was that we really didn't want to put people on tr truck route one and nine going directly east out of Jersey City. If any of you have ever ridden on truck route one and nine, uh, it is an interesting experience uh, to say the least. And in fact, for many years, uh, if people, uh, you know, called us up and said, you know, you know, we want to get, we, we're riding, th we're through riders. We, we want to go through that part of New Jersey. And, you know, we'd ask them, you know, you know, what's your experience? Uh, you know, do, do, you, do, do you have extra inner tubes, you know, things like that. Uh, and sometimes we'd actually put them on the path train because it really was that bad. Uh, so uh, you're not you're not wrong to ask that question. Uh, I will say this. In certain jurisdictions, it's been very hard to put up signs. Uh, in some cases, uh, we lose signs. Uh, so it's kind of a never ending struggle with signage in certain areas, particularly urban areas, uh, because it's tough to find places to put them sometimes. Uh, we run into municipal uh, uh, highway departments uh, that we have difficulty working with sometimes. Uh, it's, 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 it's mind numbing. <laughs> uh, but we really, but that piece of New Jersey in particular, uh, coming out of New York City, uh, going east, uh, southeast, 
uh, is critically important to us and, and is going to be uh, in the next couple of years. So stay tuned. And, and by the way, we'd love any input you can give us as well. Awesome. That's what this is about. It's about building together, as we've said before. And each of your contributions and donations to the work that we do here at the East Coast Greenway Alliance makes improvements like these possible. So thank you all again for joining us. Bruce, you're awesome. You fielded those questions like an amazing, amazing person. Um, oh, we have one more. I think we can answer it. Um, Anthony Moore from Facebook. Tactically, what's your thinking about how to approach the Western Connecticut gaps? Is it finding money? changing the message, altering route plans, advocating at a particular political level. Oh boy, it's all of those, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, no, it really is. Uh, you know, we were, we were literally shocked that Stanford voted down that design money uh, that I carefully got for them. Um, uh, it's, there's a piece, uh, I'm working on a piece uh, uh, between the two campuses of Sacred Heart University in Fairfield. That's right on the right of way corridor uh, for the uh, for the Mayor Parkway. That's a possibility that may happen. Uh, so if you, many of you may not be aware, but uh, the old General Electric uh, headquarters buildings uh, were taken over for a song by Sacred Heart University as their Western campus. And so they, they'd love to have a bicycle facility in between the two. Uh, so we're working on that. That's a possibility. But, you know, going forward, um, the Merritt Parkway had a, had, a, had a design, not a design study, a feasibility study done by DOT that was never fully published. But what was published was the construction number, which was $250 million for that 37 miles. Uh, and it was that cost because they didn't acknowledge going off of the right of way. So... Uh, uh, because if you've ever been on the Merritt Parkway Trail, you know perfectly well there's parts of it that are never going to get built because uh, it's literally solid rock to one side. Uh, there's there, there's general you know geology and geography problems. Uh, there's uh, bridge overpass problems. There's there's engin there's engineering problems. Pieces of it are never going to get built. So it's going to be there's going to be workarounds regardless, even if that gets started. Uh, and then you've got political issues there. Uh, you know, to be perfectly serious, uh, the, uh, uh, the Mayor Parkway uh, Heritage uh, Group uh, has been very negative uh, and has shot down things over the years. Uh, they're concerned, uh, they're concerned about a lot of things, but uh, um, I think with proper design, they wouldn't be so concerned, but that's an issue. Uh, and then there are individual towns that have people uh, that have come to public information meetings over the years with their lawyers. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, they really don't want it built. And there's other people that do. It's, it's, a, it's a frustrating corridor to work in. Uh, and, and the workarounds I talked about to the north uh, and to the south along, along Route 1. Route 1, of course, is our signed on-road route right now. And the north is a possibility. And I've put that in play because it's a possibility. Uh, I'm sorry I can't answer that any better, but uh, uh, it's been a real chore to try to get uh, anything done on, on the Merritt Parkway for 30 years now. Absolutely. So some some ongoing things there in Connecticut, and we're just trying to facilitate conversations as best we can to address the concerns of all the parties who are going to be affected by designing and implementing and planning a new trail. So thank you so much for that question. Uh, Ronald Clement, I think he's just follow up. Um, comment saying, I would just like to see signage approaching the route from Lincoln Park in Jersey City and especially exiting Newark approaching the bridge en route to Jersey City's Lincoln Park. Also some signage in between as you cross over the river and the bay. Thank you for addressing my earlier comment regarding this issue. So, yeah. Good. So uh, I, I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned that. So, so we will revisit that. I, I know coming into Lincoln Park, particularly we lost some signage. They moved some signage, which we haven't replaced. I, I do know that. Uh, so, yes, thank you. We, we will take a hard look at that. Good. Yeah, absolutely. We've already placed a link to donate to fund this type of work in the comment section. But we'd also love to see you out on the trail with us. As Bruce said, we will be coming back in 2022 with the New York to Philly ride in May. 
So that registration link is now open. So feel free to register and join us on the trail. We would love to see you out there. And again, thank you guys for joining us for 40 minutes on this Tuesday evening. We will be back next week at a different time. We'll be back on Tuesday at 11 a.m. with Sarah, who is the North Carolina and Virginia Regional Manager. So thank you guys again for joining us, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much, Bruce. Thanks, everybody.